proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to Proudly We Hail. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we are happy to present the distinguished actor, Mr. Barry Fitzgerald, as the star of our play, The Light Burns Brightly, written by Richard Hall with music by Eddie Scrivanik. <laughs> It was raining that night, but the sound of the rain didn't conceal the hurried footsteps and the heavy breathing of the dark figure of a hunted man. He paused a moment in front of a pretentious country house. Then he turned and disappeared in the darkness. The others were seconds behind as they rushed up the path to the door of the house. Oh, my, who in the world would get rid of... Upon my word! Oh, Sheriff Mead. Mr. Kennedy here, Briggs? Oh, why, 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 yes, of course. Yeah, what's all this noise? What's all this noise? Sheriff. Ah, Sheriff Mead. Now, what brings you here at this hour? Sorry to bother you, Mr. Kennedy. We're after a fugitive, a man named Dolan. Oh, that fellow. Yeah, I read about him in the newspaper. He's somewhere in this vicinity, Mr. Kennedy, and I thought I'd better warn you. He's armed and he's desperate. Oh, oh dear. Hadn't I better drive us, uh, that is, you, into town for tonight, Mr. Kennedy? Nonsense, Briggs. We'll hold down the fort. <laughs> Well, this is very kind of you to let us know, Sheriff. I'm going to leave a detail of men here with you for the night. Oh, that won't be necessary. We've been covered by that private detective agency since I received an extortion letter last month. Besides, we can take care of ourselves, can't we, Briggs? Uh, uh, can we, sir? He's a pretty tough hombre, Mr. Kennedy. Well, if you think so. Oh, I, I, I think it's an excellent idea, Sheriff Mead. I'll put a man at each gate entering the grounds here. We've got a net out for him. We know he's in this vicinity somewhere. We'll get him. I, I, I do hope so. Briggs, you'd better go to bed. You're shivering as if you had the ache. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, thank, thank you, sir. Well, thanks again, sir. Uh, that's okay. Say, you picked a bad night to play cops and robbers, didn't you? Come in, Mr. Dolan. Don't move. Don't move or I'll blast you. I know your reputation, Mr. Dolan. You needn't remind me. Oh, get your hands up. Get them up. Very well, Mr. Dolan. Oh, back up there, behind the telephone. And don't move. Hello? Eddie, this is Dolan. Where are you? I'm in a spot, Eddie. But I think there's a way out of it. You wait there. I'll call you, tell you where to meet me. Mr. Dolan, may I put my hands down now? You know, this is very hard on a man of my age. You keep him up there. I'm putting my hands down, and you're putting that gun away. Stand back there. Sorry, Mr. Dolan, I'm an old man. I haven't long to live anyway. Huh. You've got a lot of guts, haven't you? Oh, no, you see, I had a son. He'd have been just about your age now. So you see, I know, boys. Now, will you put that gun down? Uh, what have I got to lose? But you wouldn't mind if I sort of held it handy here, just, just in case? Oh, not at all, Mr. Dolan. That's better. Now, I think we ought to shake hands. My name is Kennedy. I know all about you. Eh, this is some joint you got here. Oh, thank you. Would you care to look around? I got other things on my mind. Oh, that's right, yes. You want to get away, don't you? Well, in case you hadn't heard, there's an armed deputy at each of my gates. Thanks for letting me know. Yes, and there's a half hundred more in the grounds. You haven't a prayer of getting away. I'll take my chances. How? I, I don't know yet. You're a bank robber, aren't you, Mr. Tone? That's right. And you escaped from the penitentiary. How much longer did you have to serve? Two years. Well, no, that isn't long, is it, son? Well, that's two years of my life. Two long years. Yeah, but you're so young. Tell me, why don't you give yourself up? Then make it very tough for you when they catch you. 
They won't catch me. You have to think awful hard in a spot like this, don't you? You can say that again. Well, it's too bad you don't use that thinking constructively. Save it. You, uh, you got a car, haven't you, Kennedy? <laughs> I wondered how soon you think of that. Of course. And a driver? Yeah, we have a chauffeur. He's also my butler. All right, get me the keys to the car and one of his uniforms. Very yeah, well, I'll ring for him. Get away from that cord. It's too late, Mr. Dolan. But don't worry about Briggs. He jumps at his own shadow. You better not try to pull any funny stuff, Kennedy. Really? Ring for me, Mr. Kennedy. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> you see? He fainted. The panty waste. <laughs> We pause briefly from our story, The Lights Burn Brightly, starring Barry Fitzgerald, to bring you an important message from your war department. 40,000 good jobs are available to young men each month. Yes, the new regular army needs 40,000 men every 30 days to replace those being lost through discharge and other causes. These men are necessary to carry on the new regular army program of scientific research and development. Here is a chance for an ambitious young man to start a career in medicine, aviation, electronics, atomics, engineering, photography, and other interesting fields. The soldier is trained in any one of many industrial trades and scientific skills. An Army job is high-paying, with opportunities for advancement and the chance to retire after only 20 or up to 30 years. The pay for a private in the Army is equivalent to a salary in other fields of $342.86 a month, according to the editors of a prominent business magazine. And for a three-year enlistment, a man may choose his branch of service and theater where available. Ask at your nearest Army recruiting station today about your chances for one of these 40,000 jobs. Enlist for three years for a career with a future. Act two of The Light Burns Brightly, starring Barry Fitzgerald as Frederick Kennedy, the retired millionaire. Dolan, Frederick Kennedy's uninvited guest, has bound and gagged Briggs after forcing Kennedy to furnish him the chauffeur's uniform which he has put on to make his escape through the police cordon. Dolan is hurrying to get away. Ah, the keys to the car, Kennedy. Here. Yeah. They'd better be the right ones. There. Yeah. Don't you believe me? I must be going nuts, but I do. I still insist you're out of your mind to leave at this hour. Why? For the simple reason that my car very rarely, if ever, leaves at this hour. You're being nice to me, aren't you? Too nice. Are you trying to stall me here? But don't you see my point? They'd be very suspicious of, of my car leaving this early in the morning. Uh, I'll stick around a little longer. Well, no, I think you'll be wise to do so. You've knocked around quite a little in your life, haven't you? A little. You've been hungry, too, huh? How'd you know? Oh, something about the shoes you wear. Huh? Hey, you're really a screwball. You know, Mr. Dorn, it's a strange thing about all plants or animals. The really fine ones require the best that nature can provide to grow and flourish. Here, come over here. Huh? Look at that plant. Isn't that lovely? Uh a real Brazilian orchid. Put it in the right soil, provide the right temperature, it grows quickly and blossoms quite unexpectedly. Which proves what? Oh, nothing. Do you like beautiful flowers? Oh, I don't know. I never thought of it. Well, come on with me now. I'll show you some more. <laughs> Well, so long, Mr. Kennedy. Thanks for your hospitality. Dolan, please, turn yourself in. You're young. You've got everything in the world ahead of you. Save it. I'll make a proposition. You give yourself up. Now, I'm an influential man. I'll do everything I can for you when you get out. Are you kidding? I've already bought my ticket, Mr. Kennedy, and it only goes one way. All right. Say, wouldn't you going to make another phone call? Uh, you remember things, don't you? No, thanks, Kennedy. Not now. I uh, do need your phone, though. Here. I wanted to give it to you. 
A present. Still don't trust me. Well, you never know. Well, Kennedy, thanks again for your hospitality. I hate to do this to you, but... You all right? I'm all right, except for this eye. Dolan was here last night, left me a little memento. Yeah, we know all about it. Well, I could shoot every man in that detective agency. After I got that extortion note last month, they were supposed to check every phone call. Just a minute, Mr. Kennedy, I... Uh... Dolan called from my phone. If they'd been on the toes, he'd have had him. I stalled him as long as I could. It's all right, Mr. Kennedy. We got Dolan. You caught him? No, he turned himself in. Turned himself in? Yep. Pretty amazing thing. Say, Mr. Kennedy, you better get to a doctor. Oh, that's nothing. So he turned himself in, did he? Mead, I'm going to call the governor at once. Well, why? Well, I want to find out what can be done. I want to do everything possible for that boy. But look here. Say, look. Look over there. Huh? What's that? I mean that orchid. That Brazilian orchid. It's starting to blossom. What? You think I'm crazy, don't you? Well, I... <laughs> well, I am, Mead, I am. Crazy, but practical. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> this is C.P. McGregor speaking. I hope you've enjoyed our Proudly We Hail story starring Barry Fitzgerald. Before leaving you, Don Forbes has an important message for all of us. Would you like to know how to make that new white shirt or that new dress last 4,000 years? Well, just keep it in a dry desert climate and protect it from the rays of the sun. According to Army scientists, sunlight and fabric mold, most prevalent in damp tropical climates, are the chief causes of deterioration. Regular Army researchers are experimenting with fabric materials, preparing them to withstand these effects and prolong the life of cloth garments. They're studying the various types of fungi which attack fabrics and the conditions under which they're most destructive. As a result of these Army studies, clothing in the future will be specially treated to extend their length of wearing. Experiments in strengthening the clothing material is a part of the new regular Army program of scientific research and development. In other fields, such as medicine, aviation, radio, engineering, and many more, regular Army scientists are waging a continuous and winning battle against the elements. Planes are approaching supersonic speed. Man can see in the darkness with an Army-developed instrument known as the snooper scope. New techniques in medicine and surgery, such as the use of penicillin and a substance proving successful in the treatment of anemia, are being developed and utilized in the Army. Commercial nitrate fertilizers to improve the quality and yield of our farmers' crops is being manufactured. In all fields, the Army is contributing to human progress. Skilled men are doing this work. Many more, 40,000 each month, are needed to carry on the Army program. Intelligent young men capable of being educated to handle the complicated scientific equipment of our technically trained Army are required. High-paying jobs with security and opportunities for advancement are open to alert young men 18 to 35 or 17 with parents' consent. Ask today at your local recruiting station about the work of the new regular army and the chances for a career in it for you. Thank you, Mr. Barry Fitzgerald, for appearing on this War Department program. Proudly We Hail will come to you again on this station next week. Listen in. <laughs>